Hallelujah. Alright, today we will finish up the topic of prayer. Amen. The topic of prayer. And I want us to look at some scriptures that we have been uh, treating in the past weeks. Let's look at the book of Luke 18, the verse number one. Luke 18, verse 1. The Bible says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always to pray. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Men ought always to be one and not to faint. And I ask that, how can somebody pray and not faint? How can we continue to be in prayer? Uh, there's six, uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5, the verse number 17, we will also say that we should pray without ceasing. We should pray without what? Season. So the question is, how can we pray that continuously without season? And last week, we, we, we learned, or last two weeks, we learned the prayer that the Lord gave to us, our Father in heaven. We, we, we learned throughout and we know how we can use that prayer topics to pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Today, I want us to look at um, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6, the verse number 18. Alright, Ephesians 6, 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So I want to emphasize on the um, phrase in the Spirit. He says that praying always or pray always or pray always with all prayer, all prayer. So whatever kind of prayer you pray has to be what? In the spirit. In the spirit. Now how do we pray in the spirit? How do we pray in the spirit? Praying in the spirit. I think we, we, we learned about it, so we have to be able to give us. How do we pray in the spirit? Connected. Help us with microphone because I think some of you can pray it. Praying in the spirit. Yes. Connecting your mind to the spirit when you pray by you not thinking about what I'm sorry for. You are not thinking about what you pray or a certain thing when you are praying connected to the spirit. Amen. In actual fact, okay, praying in the spirit is opposite in praying in the flesh. Is that also? And so what does it mean to be pray in the flesh? Because we know that. Uh, is if we are to pray in the spirit, that means it is possible for us also to pray in the flesh. So what 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 is what does it mean to pray in the flesh? Who, who, what kind of prayer do, can we say that this prayer is in the flesh? Oh, talk to me. Because if the Bible says that we should do all prayers and supplication in the spirit, in actual fact, opposite of in the spirit is in the flesh. Okay, so what prayer can be termed as this prayer is in the flesh? If I show you, you will know that most of the prayers we do, we do it in the flesh. Uh huh. You see, most of the time we pray based on what is going on around us. 
the things we see, the things we hear, the things we feel, the things that we touch. I mean, those are the things that we stand on to pray. So if you will see that, uh, especially we the Africans, if you will see that somebody has entered into fasting and prayers, that means the person is going through some difficult time in the flesh. You would hardly see somebody. That is why rich people, they don't, they don't even normally pray. Why? Because they feel that they have everything. Well, what is the point of praying? So we think that prayer is always where we carry our needs and bring them to God. Amen. Or we talk to God about the things we go through. We complain to Him. And so on those prayers, I'm telling you, 99.9% of them are in the flesh. So, the scripture says that we should pray, pray always with all, all prayer. All prayer. All, not some, all prayer and supplication. Supplication is when we are carrying our needs before him, like we learned uh, from our father. He said that we should ask him our daily bread. So it's not wrong to do that, but it should be done in the spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But ask the question, how can you how can you do this occasion to go to this? Alright. It's very, very simple. Very simple. You see, if I normally, how many of you here that when you are going to go with your supplication? It's, it's more of your spiritual needs than physical needs. Because everything that God has for you, in actual fact, we will look at First Peter now, that the scripture says that in his divine power has given unto us everything we need pertain to life and godliness. So, so the reality is that in the spirit you have all things. In the spirit you have what? All things. And so if I'm going to God, for example, uh, uh, for my daily bread, it's not talking just about what you will eat. The food that you are thinking about, it's not talking about that. It's talking about Jesus. Remember Jesus said that man shall not live by Bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. So pray for your supplication in the spirit. You can go to him for a word of the day, for directions of the day, for how you ought to live your life in order for the things that are yours in the spirit to come into manifestation. Is that clear? Now, are you clear about that? Let me, let, me, let me take that. Let me, let me give you this picture. Let's go to first Peter. All right. Uh, first Peter chapter 1. I'll show you two scriptures. Okay, first Peter 1. Let me start from the verse number three. First Peter one. All right. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercies has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse four. Now look at it, verse four. No, before even we go to verse 4, I want you to watch something. Watch something here. Go back to verse 3. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. To what? A living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now what the best for? 
So you are born again unto what? What are the best verses? To an inheritance. To an inheritance. Incorruptible and undefiled. That, and that does not fade away. Reserved in heaven. Now note it. Reserved in heaven for you. Now many people translate this to be that oh, when we get to heaven, we have inheritance. But listen to, that is why I point on the two at verse 3 again and again. Listen to what the verse 3 is saying and you will understand that this is not just talking about inheritance when we go to heaven that we enjoy it. But there is inheritance that has already been prepared. Your name is stamped on it. Everything that you will ever need is in that inheritance. Now how do I enjoy that inheritance here on earth? Let's go back to 3 again. Alright. He said that his abundant mercy has begotten us again. Are we going to be born again in heaven? Or here? We are born again here. Alright. So he said that his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. In other words, when Jesus raised, okay, I raised up with him. And God did that to, so that the inheritance that is in Christ Jesus can be mine. Everything that is in Christ Jesus can be mine. So he said, to an inheritance that does not, I mean, you can defy it, it does not fade, and it's reserved for us in heaven. So, now note it. My prayer for my, I mean the supplication, my prayer to carry my needs to him is that I know I have inheritance. It's in the heavenly places. Alright. So if I go before him, I am going before him so that the inheritance can, can come to me in the reality in order for me to be useful with, uh, with the inheritance. So, for example, in my life, I think that I need a car, I need a house. These are some of the things that we always think about. I need a house, I need clothes to wear, I need food to eat. And so most of the time, we go to God and that is what we carry to God. Not knowing what God has in store for us. Amen. That is why when Jesus was teaching us to pray, he said, first, even before you ask for your bread, he said, ask that his will be done. So what he has prepared for you, be done in your life. Let your will be done on earth. And most of the time, when we think about, let your will be done, you see, we, we just don't go deep into it. Let your will be done in my ministry. Let your will be done in my work. Let your will be done. So all these, whatever he has for you, now when you are praying his will to be done, then be ready to also walk in his way. So that what he has prepared for you will come to pass. So our supplication should not always be the food, the clothes, the physical things. We also have to think that he has given, let's go to Second Peter. I brought you here. So Second Peter 1. Okay, that also let's start from the verse number 2. Grace and peace be multiple to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Grace be multiple where? In the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. In the knowledge. So not it. Not it. The question is, the grace of God. He said that should multiple to you in the knowledge. What do you know? 
that you are in Christ Jesus? Who do you know that you are in Christ Jesus? What do you know that you have in Christ Jesus? And grace multiple in the knowledge of who you are, your true identity in Christ Jesus. All right, let's go further. Three, as his divine power has given to us, what did he say? His divine power has given to us, no, some of the things. His divine power has given to us some of the things we need. No, he says that all things, and not it, it did not say that his divine power will give. Has given. What is the meaning of has given? So in the spiritual realm, I am telling you, you have all things. Pertain to life and godliness. In Christ Jesus, whatever will let you lead a good life in Christ has already been given. In this life, whatever you need to lead a better life has already been given. Hello? Am I talking to somebody? No, this is scripture. This is not my words. His divine go there, go there. What's happening? Alright. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And how does it come? How does it come? Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Through the knowledge of him who called us. So it's, it, that is why when you are ignorant, the, the enemy always take advantage of you. Lack of knowledge by people, listen to it. He said, my people, my people, my old people perish for lack of knowledge. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they have. So they always come as beggars. They always approach me as they don't know what they have. And that is why our church has become a begging church. Our own night is always begging. We don't know what we have. We spend long prayers begging God for things that he has already given. Hello? I'm not talking to somebody at all. I know it. So when you come to know that you have it, that is where faith becomes real, real to you. Because I know that I have all things. But if I look around me now, I don't see having all things. So the point is, either I will stand upon what I see to pray, or I will stand upon the word of God to pray. So standing upon the word of God to pray, praying in the spirit. Do you understand what I mean? Come on, you are too tired. No, is that clear? Wonderful. You see, he has given you the opportunity to ask. Now let me ask a question and answer that. Give me a phone. This is mine. I'm your father. This is yours. I have it in your name. But it's not in your hands now. So, you are asking for what is already yours to be given to you so that it can, it can be useful to you. Do you understand what I mean? So, everything that, let's say that a father, whatever inheritance that you have, is for your children. 
But sometimes your children are like, oh, this is that little child. If I have said thousand pounds for this child, this child, if I give the thousand pounds to her, what is she going to use for? Even this one. But if you get thousand pounds, oh, I got it. She will go into thinking, not know what to do. But let me ask her. Because she is mature, let me ask her, sister, if you get thousand pounds, the plan has already been progressed not long ago before even the thousand pounds came in. Why? Because she is mature. All right. How did she become mature? Knowledge. She know how to use it. She know how to, I mean, do something better with that. Money. Like this one. Thousand pounds. By the time you realize all the teeth will turn to black. Because they're sweet and old. Am I, am I saying the truth? <laughs> you, you understand what I mean? So, everything we have is in Him. Alright? Now, our accent then is we ask for what is ours when we become mature and we know that I have inheritance in him. I ask for what is mine to come to me. That is where I told you, I think last week, that if your faith is your positive reaction to what God has already done in the grace for you. I'll say that again. Your faith, when we talk about faith, 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 your faith is your positive action, positive reaction towards what God has already done for you. And so it always says that now faith is your action towards the things you do not see. Do you get the other point? So the action is Knowing that, for example, I have never, I can't think of a day that Gabriel came to the house and then he will ask that, that he cannot go into the fridge to get what is in the fridge. He has come of knowledge to know that everything in the fridge, he has legal right over it. So he comes and boldly, you go there, even if you have spare it for yourself, by the time you realize, it's gone. It's his. Gabriel would, uh, Godfrey would tell me that it belongs to the family, it's ours, it's mine. You understand what I mean? He has come to know that in the family he has legal right. And that is why when you become mature, there are things that are for taking. When you are a child, you always ask. 